Hello everybody. I wanted to do a quick little video here where um, I talked a little bit more about this slicer program that I like to use and uh, kind of explain a little bit more of um, you know what works for me. I mean I've had a lot of people talk about some uh, different settings and things they can't get to work and uh, I just want to kind of show you uh, something I did and uh, hopefully this will help you understand a little bit more uh, about uh, this slicer program that I use and uh, what I want to start off with is um, some of the settings in it up here on the right you'll see that there is different sizes that, I mean different thicknesses that you can make your layers okay I don't want you to confuse this though with the initial setting you make when you start a print because when you first start a print on the uh, Prusa i3, you can um, go in and press a button on the controller and you can go into Live Z Axis Control and you can fine tune. So basically what I want to show you here is I'm going to just go ahead and slice this little guy here. And uh, I'm going to zoom in here, go over to my preview page. And essentially what I want to do is show you that uh, right now, when this first layer goes down, right here, the i3 has a way for you to go into live adjust how high the nozzle is off the print bed. Okay? So don't confuse that with what each of your layers are going to be. Because when you first start a print, if, the, if this first layer looks like um, almost like a round uh, extrusion, you're too high. If it's really low and, and as it starts to print, you start seeing lines uh, like drag marks, um, almost like when a farmer plows a field, that means the nozzle's too low. So what you really want to do is you want these um, initial, this initial layer to just be almost like, um, imagine taking a cardboard tube and smashing it down about three quarters of the way. You want it to be wide, but you don't want it to be completely flat. You, you want it to be uh, kind of like an oval or even an ellipse. So now what I want to talk about here on this printer is you can go here to the settings, filament settings right here, and right here you see, um, you know, this is pretty much preset for the diameter of filament you use, but this is extrusion multiplier. So right here I have mine on 1.04 because my uh, printer right now under extrudes just a little bit. And what you see when you under extrude is that the uh, lines as they're squirting out of the nozzle aren't touching each other uniformly um, or, or there's a little gap in between them. If you over extrude you can kind of see it piling up. One of the things that's really important about, um, hang on a minute, let me get back to here. One of the important things, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to set uh, an infill of um, let's say 20% here and I'm going to do it grid and yeah and then I need to re slice it now what you're gonna see here is basically these cavities are so you don't use so much filament but when this layer right here comes up right here and it goes over it you'll see that there's a little bit of space in between them and that's normal and then the next one crosses paths over it and then closes but this right here, this initial layer, if you're under extruding, it will tear in the middle and you'll just have little flops of filament here. If it's over extruding, it might sag a little bit. But if it's extruding just right, there should just be a little bit of a sag here. And then when this next layer comes in, it starts to level itself out. Okay? So I hope that makes sense. But I want to talk about some settings for a minute. So right here, I talked about the extrusion. I talked about, um, I mean, right here is where you set your temperatures that you want to print at. The first layer I always have a little bit lower than the next layer because the heat bed's uh, at 100 C. So as it builds up, though, you might want it to adhere better to each layer because you're not getting the heat from the bed anymore. I want to go over here to print settings again, go to layer. Depending on how high you set this, this automatically has some adjustment that Joseph Prusa has cho choose, chosen to be the default in this. If you hover over here, you'll see that it says default 3. Now that's by Slicer, the people who made this program. But these are Prusa kind of presets that they recommend you try to do. And what I want you to think about is, right now the, um, 
um, the perimeter has uh, is set on a minimum of five. If I go back over to the platter here, if you count right here on the perimeter, you'll see five. Okay, if I go back over here and I set this only to two, and then re-slice it, you'll see there's only two lines around the perimeter. I like to have at least five because as you do thinner layers, um, if as this is extruding out, it might get a little bit uh, um, wonky on you. So I, what I like to do is just as a rule of thumb for what I've learned to do is I set this to a minimum of five. Okay, my top, your bottom layer doesn't have to have as many layers because it's sitting on the hotbed. But the top layer is a layer that has to be stretched over different vertical supports, called, and this is called, you know, basically you're bridging. And you want enough layers so that the final layer ends up being smooth and it looks good. So um, what happens here is if I go down here, got to re-slice it. If I go down here, these initial layers here will be five because I had it set on, well, did I have it set on five? I don't remember. Seven. So the, the bottom layers is going to be seven. Then I have, um, you know, my, basically I'm making it hollow. But these layers starting here, I'll end up having nine layers. And that is to make sure that this ends up really, really smooth and uniform. Okay. Um, when I did this test print here, I wanted to see how accurate this point would be here. You know, how accurate the circle, the square, the ellipse, um, and then some different shapes. And this was just to test my printer, okay? So um, the only 90%, now there is a way to do support material. And this means if you have an overhang. And actually, hang on a minute. Let me see if I can. I'll show you what that does. So if I go back into here, and I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees. Now keep in mind, I would never print it like this. Okay, right now I have some openings here. Well, like this right here is not supported by anything. So it's impossible for a 3D printer to point that, to print the way that's hanging there. So what I would do is go up to settings, I would go to support material, I would rate, hit generate uh, support material, and I would essentially, you know, if you hit, I think this one, if you set it at zero, it will automatically figure out what you want. So let's go back to the platter now. I'm gonna hit slice. I'm going to go over to preview, and now you'll see that it put support material in there to hold all of this up. Okay, so, and it, and it breaks off because the contact between this and your model is really, really microscopically, like, thin. So you just take your fingers and wiggle it, and all that support material will pop right out of there. So these are the basic uh, things that I use when I'm doing my 3D printing. So let's kind of recap this again. I go into the uh, filament settings. This is how I set if I'm over or under extruding. These are the temperatures I want it to print at. Okay, so you got the uh, extruder and then you have your bed. I always keep the bed between 100 and 110. Um, if you're using something like PLA, which I never print in, these are going to be much lower. Go online and look at those. Um, it's much, much lower. It's like uh, 80 and your extruders are like 220, but I deal only in ABS and nylon. So for ABS, you know, this is my settings. Another neat thing about this uh, program is you can save your own presets. So I've got, um, you know, for the uh, 3DX Tech Nylon and the 3DX Tech ABS, those are the two uh, settings I use 99% of the time, okay? I do have another 3DX uh, ABS up here. Uh, which you see this one that starts the first layer at 250 and there's some other settings I don't rem even remember why I did that um, but um, I hope that makes sense to everybody uh, I've got some video shot here which I want to kind of describe to you what's going on when that first layer goes on it's it's it, it's not that important because the bottom of the bed is going to make it smooth it's your top layer that matters. Another thing is, keep in mind what an, a 3D printer can really do. If you're wanting to print something ultra, ultra thin, and let's say it's only a millimeter thick, um, you, you, you'll, need to set up your, you'll need to adjust your settings in here a little bit differently. Actually, let me uh, just really quickly, I'm going to go into um, my, um, so here's my test part right here. I extruded it out right Okay, I extruded it out right here. Edit feature. I'm going to make this one millimeter. Hopefully it doesn't screw up anything. Okay, one millimeter. I'm going to hit make. 
3D print. I want to do this. Hit OK. I'm going to come over here and call this um, 50 millimeter test um, dash uh, one millimeter, which means one millimeter thick. Okay, so I'll close that out. Come back over to here. Oops, you can't see my other screen, so it doesn't matter. Test one millimeter. Okay, so right now this is my one millimeter thick. So what I'm going to do here is I need to rotate it so it's flat on my bed. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, rotate it around a little bit like that because that's the way I print it the first time. Um, so now what I'm going to do is if I slice that, there probably won't be enough empty material inside it to have hollow cavities. See, see it doesn't. So basically what's happening here, if I go to my print, and go to my layers, I have nine top layers and seven bottom layers. I bet this uh, one millimeter doesn't even have, you know, a total of 16 layers. So, um, you know, just to play around here, if I set the bottom at uh, four layers and the top at four layers, and um, hit print, it probably still won't be hollow. Nope, it's not. So printing something like this will work on your printer. I found out that less than a millimeter doesn't really work very well. I don't want to say that. I've done a few less than a millimeter, but you really need to make sure that you, uh, when you do your initial start of the print, you set your nozzle exactly at the right height off the bed. Okay, and I'm not talking about up here. I'm talking about when you do your initial um, start, you, you press the button on the i3, you go into the live uh, Z uh, control, and you make sure that it is squishing the filament just right on your bed so you can get good, really thin prints. Okay? So I hope this all makes sense. Thanks for watching my videos. If you got any uh, questions, of course, keep the um, emails coming, and you all have a great day. Take care. Bye.